Referred to by many as the holy grail of Japanese jazz, Ryo Fukui's 1976 release of Scenery has, without a doubt, become a modern day classic for casual and veteran jazz fans alike. So today, we are going to explore this album and see what it was really all about. How good was Ryo Fukui's scenery actually? This is your first time here and you love exploring fascinating music, make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn all notifications on, and let me know in the comments below which other albums you think I should explore for a future video. The piano, at least in my opinion, has always had this stigma that you need to be playing for years and years. An instrument you have to begin at an early age or you need to be this absolute prodigy at to even make strides as a professional in the real world. I believe this comes from the prestige that surrounds the piano. The instrument encompasses everything to a royal degree and demands a certain respect that most other instruments, in my opinion, just simply cannot touch. It's classy, it's romantic, charming and compact. The piano keeps you on your toes while always being cool, collected and the best dressed in the room. If the piano was a person, it would be unfazed by the dirtiest of martinis, all while still being able to show you around, introduce you to the family, and make you feel at home. Well, Ryo Fukui throws this all out the window, because this man created what can realistically be considered the most famous Japanese jazz work in modern times, scenery, after only playing the piano for six years. That's right. Fukui began playing the piano at 22 years old, and shortly after, in his late 20s, would drop a timeless masterpiece of Japanese jazz. How did this happen? Japanese jazz found itself to be in a bit of a rut in the 1970s, specifically overseas. After the death of Coltrane in 1967, American jazz became this vacuum to what else was popular at the time. You had rock, funk, and rhythm, ultimately creating what would become known as jazz fusion, or simply referred to as just fusion. By the mid-70s, this was the sound of jazz in Western culture. Even the untouchable Miles Davis would end up getting inspired by artists like Jimi Hendrix, and he joined in on the fun, crafting up pieces like Bitches Brew in 1969 and Big Fun in 74. Because of such a developed identity in the West, Scenery was virtually unknown outside of Japan upon its release in 1976. What made Ryo's album stand out and slowly but surely grow to its current day popularity was its refreshing dedication to a style from start to finish. There was a lot of direction in Fukui's method. His piano was powerful and jolting, each key or chord sharp and hit with striking emotion compared to most other jazz works out there. While most jazz in the 70s was built on its dedication to being experimental, smoky and complex in its composition, scenery was crisp and to the point. Every second, every note felt crafted with a purpose and seems beautifully meticulous. My good friend and YouTuber known as Steve M has created an incredible video on the history of Ryo Fukui and the development of Japanese jazz in general. I'm gonna link it in the description below and I also have him here with me today to share an insane story of what happened to him after he made that video. So make sure you stick around for that. Look, I'm no jazz expert. <laughs> and like most people who happen to stumble across this video, I'm assuming you may have discovered scenery in a similar sort of fashion to how I did. Whether the album popped up in your YouTube recommended section one day or you just saw someone speak highly about it on some sort of subreddit or something. You just started listening to it and it ended up becoming this go-to piece of music for studying, relaxing, or just enjoying a nice day too. Rio's demanding piano play without sounding rough or muddy is extremely pleasurable and has the other two members of the trio, a bassist and a drummer, complement the attitude he puts forth in such a mature and understanding way that the whole album becomes an easy to digest, breathable experience from start to end. It's almost as if Rio's piano playing are vocals themselves. There's so much life and form to every note that it all seems to be speaking to us in every measure of every song, from laid back cool chords to more in your face solos like on the last track of side A, Early Summer. And Rio doesn't just hog all the attention for himself. Opportunity is given to the other instrumentalists on here as well. The latter parts of that track sends the first side of the album off with this explosive drum solo by Ryo's brother, Yoshinori. And how about track 5, Autumn Leaves, where we are walked through the song by the trot-like play of Satoshi Denpo, this elegant staircase of bass notes that shine while the other instruments take a seat and rest back up. In 2018, 
I went out of my way to make sure to pick this album up. They were doing a re-release of it on this limited edition 180G vinyl with half speed remastering. All done to bring out the very best of the album with an incredible attention to sound quality. This repress is easily one of the best sounding records I have in my entire collection and I spin it quite frequently compared to the rest of my jazz selections. To sum it up, half speed mastering is a process done during production to give records a richer, fuller sound quality. When producing the master record, the process is slowed down to half the speed. Your typical 33 and a third RPM record is cut instead at 16 and two thirds. Doing this allows for more intricate, true to form cuts in the groove to bring forward the original source material to a higher degree. You get a lot more accuracy and response in sound. And what better album to have this done for than scenery? The album art was given that beautiful traditional Japanese OB strip you see on many other Japanese vinyl records. I love the design on this thing. The type treatment and hierarchy is a joy to look at and translates over wonderfully with the album's powerful playstyle and contrast. Black and white, big letters with individual thin strokes making each one up. So with all this being said, how good was Ryo Fukui's scenery? actually. Well, looking at how impactful it has been from its inception to even the present day, I say it's pretty damn good. Each song is tightly knit with one another and has great audience retention. That's really my main compliment about the album, why I think it works so well for many people today. I think many of us find it exciting visualizing Rio's frantic piano play developing throughout each song, which without a doubt, is obviously the star of the show on scenery. This dedication to a calm yet explosive attitude on scenery gives it its identity, which ultimately caused the album to stick out during a time of lacking self-recognition. Rio knew what he wanted to do with his music and he did just that. In 2016, Rio tragically passed away due to lymphoma. However, his legacy lives on infinitely, from his jazz club called The Showboat, which is now run by his wife, Yasuko, in Sapporo, Japan, artists dedicating their performances daily to the legendary Ryo Fukui, to his now massive online presence, which spreads all over the world. Scenery is huge. This album is absolutely huge. And remember earlier in the video, I told you Steve M was going to tell you a story about what happened to him after he made his video on Ryo Fukui? Well, I have him here with me, and uh, this is some pretty crazy stuff, so check this out. The Rio video was really special for me, since it was the first time I did a lot of stuff on my channel. If it was talking about music or using my own art and animation in said video. It introduced me to a lot of people. One of them was the guy who found the Rio Fukui Lost album, and he gave me the idea to email their jazz club. I didn't expect a response or anything really, but I got one from Rio's widow. She said to me, I was touched with your respect for Rio's work. I felt you had a deep understanding and love for his music. Recently, many jazz fans have come to the slow boat from all over the world. I hope Rio's music is continued to be listened to by many jazz fans in the future. A year later out of the blue, I received an email asking if Mrs. Fukui could send me a package. I still didn't expect the breadth of content that they would send, and I think it's still the kindest thing anyone has ever done for me. It even included a handwritten note on the back of a print asking me to enjoy the records. To this day, I still think this is the most important video I've made, and it really showed me how wonderful the internet can be. Being a marvel of Japanese jazz for its time with its pride and dedication to an identity has caused scenery to become truly timeless, and timelessness is something I find very hard to capture these days. If you are seeking for more after finishing scenery, you can check out Fukui's 1977 release of Mellow Dream, as well as My Favorite Tune, which was once an extremely rare album, only discovered years later after the album was uploaded onto YouTube. That's a story that deserves its own video entirely. Maybe I'll get to that sometime in the future. Ryo Fukui's self-taught talents are a tale for us all to never feel down or feel like we are too late to the game. There has never been a better time to create something magnificent. What will you come up with? I plan on doing a ton more videos um, like this one in the future, so make sure you're subscribed to the channel, stick around, and like I said earlier, let me know in the comments below any other albums you'd want me to explore further in a video. I really enjoyed making this one and I want to do more of them, so let me know. Also, if you have a quick second, I invite you to check out my Patreon page if you want to help support the channel as well as get some cool exclusive rewards. I'm gonna leave a link in the description below, so make sure you check that out. And until next time, thanks for watching so much, and I will see you around. Much love, your boy, Pat Shennington.